This is Mark Belton, Super Training Gym. Super Training Gym, the strongest gym in the West. What you're gonna see in this video is me hitting up some deadlifts with my friends here in the morning. We got here at 5 a.m. today, hit up a 10 minute walk, and then not only are you gonna see deadlifts, but I'm gonna instruct you, I'm gonna walk you through how to actually deadlift. Enjoy the video, catch y'all later. do some deadlifts and then kind of figure everything else out um, I don't program or write anything down I just come in and move around some weight and then like whatever feels good I'll probably move into I don't know we'll see we'll see what happens after deadlift I know we were on that trap life mm -hmm. for a while. The old trap bar. What'd you weigh in at this morning? Uh, I haven't really been in rhythm with uh, weighing myself uh, the last couple of days, but I was, oh, you know what? I did weigh myself last night. I was uh, 239 last night. So yeah, I've been staying in the 230s, nighttime weighing, um, you know, four, sometimes five pounds heavier, depending on like what I ate and stuff like that. What a four, four plates, move around four plates a little bit. See what happens with that. Set or two of that, felt pretty good. Whew. I'll wake up in the morning. Better than a cup of coffee. <clears throat> really important in training that you stay in your own lane. You know, we're throwing around some weights here and Sean's a strong guy. He's lifted four plates before, but it's been a little bit since we've moved this bar around and there's no reason to overstretch or anything. You just go with the day, take, go with what the day has in front of you, you know, take the, the short, easy out passes, the draw plays, the screens, those kinds of things. Take this easy stuff that you know you can get. And I know like somebody might be like, oh, that's the easy route, but we're trying to build upon something. So you want to go with lifting, especially you want to go with safety. You want to have that in mind a little bit. Over time, you can build back up. But when you haven't done an exercise in a little bit, Quarters. it's not great to really push it. That's probably why I, I don't think I don't think I'll go any heavier. I'll probably just do another set with the same weight. November first, I started uh, no carbs till Christmas. And for me, I wasn't. I'm not trying to like 
do any sort of transformation or anything like that. So I'm similar and to where, where I was and plus I was already not eating carbs, but anyway, November 1, I started no carbs till Christmas and I had somebody respond on my IG this morning and said that since November 1st, they lost 22 pounds. <laughs> Crazy. Damn. Craziness. I didn't mean for it to work like that. I know you're going to do all that, you know? Damn. One more set should be good. The rolling of the weight is like uh, kind of just a little bit of a timing thing. Roll the weight out in front of me so I can get my air. Get a lot of air in the stomach. And I'm also trying to lower, lower my hips as I roll the weight away from me. As I start to roll it back towards me, I'm using the weight as a counterbalance. The weight's way out here. The weight's out here and I'm using the weight as a counterbalance as I roll it towards me. I'm starting to get in a better position as I move the weight closer to me. Go here and then here. And you know you can do a little test and just see. Whew, you can move a lot better when you have a counterbalance. So if I'm just a squat, like kind of natural range of motion for me not very good I can go a little lower than that but that's kind of about it and then when you grab one of these guys and I now have a counterbalance I can squat lower so I'll push it away from me as I go and you can see how much lower my hips are than they were before Back a little bit right. or a lot of bit of what we're trying to do when we do a squat a deadlift a bench press we're utilizing the bar as a pivot point utilizing the bar in this case uh, as something to counterbalance us to allow ourselves to pull ourselves in a better position get the back flat get the hips lower I don't do a great job of lowering my hips um, something I need to work on but when I have worked on it I'll go from I'll go from not being able to deadlift 600 to being able to do like my best is 675 for three that's the best I've done I I haven't even tried to work anywhere near that weight in a long time but if I work on it for a while the main thing that I work on is not really strength the main thing I work on is like just lowering my hips getting my hips lower getting a better position Right now, you can kind of think of it this way. I'm, I'm like, um, I'm at an end, almost like an end range of motion at the bottom, and I'm not strong from that position. My end range of motion, if it was lower, uh, I would be stronger a few inches above that end range of motion. So it's like, I have to use the weight to force myself down in a position, which isn't good. I should still pivot off the weight. I should still use the weight as a counterbalance and get in good position and have everything locked in. But what I'm trying to say is basically I should be able to get even lower and get in a position where my hips are too low. And then from there, find the point where there's the most tension with the least amount of resistance. That's what we're after, that's what we're looking for. But you kind of think about it like those of you who hurt your back before, you know you have like kind of a, an end range with your back and then your back just kind of slips out and you're like, oh shit, I don't know what that was. That's kind of what we're up against when we're deadlifting. Sometimes even though a deadlift like doesn't require a lot of mobility, um, it requires a huge skill set and then the amount of weight that you use on a deadlift. The reason why we bench press, the reason why we squat, and the reason why we deadlift is, we, is because we can use a lot of weight on those movements. It's not an overhead squat. And so because it's not an overhead squat, and because it's something that allows you to use more weight, you have to be very careful and you have to be very calculated on how you lift the weight. So it looks like 
it always looks like people are just like lifting heavy, which is somewhat of the truth. But in order to improve upon that strength, it takes a lot of work. It takes a calculated effort. Locked in just right, it feels good. That was good for today. Move on to something else. How are you feeling? Oh, uh, I, I mean, tired. Uh, I'm good though. That one got me, took my breath away. How long have you been working out with Marcus lately? Uh, almost a year. Jan end of January will be a year. So, yeah, it's been dope. Getting, uh, getting up early, getting the workout in, and feeling a lot better about the day. What time did you guys get in today? Well, we started at five today. We slept in a little bit. Mark's a freak. For today, I was able to get up to about four plates. Did a set of five, or three sets of five with that. Felt pretty good for me. Um, you know, you wanna let your reps dictate the amount of weight that you use. So whatever feels appropriate for you, but I'd like for all five reps to be perfect. So uh, this is called going to a technical limit or even actually stopping before you get to a technical limit. So a technical limit is not like max effort work. This is different. This is you're going to try to use as much weight as possible, but when your technique starts to fail, that's when you know uh, the weight's a little too heavy. So if, if you go to try this for today and you try three sets of five, and rep number three of set number one starts to go south, you start to round over a lot, you gotta lower the weight. Sometimes you don't have to lower it that much, but I'd advise you to lower it about 20 pounds until the weights start to feel a little bit better. All 15 reps for today should be super clean. The way that I was deadlifting is a little different than maybe some others. Um, I deadlift sometimes with a little wider stance, and that's because it helps me to sink my hips down uh, I'm wearing lifting straps. I don't compete in powerlifting anymore, so I don't have to worry about grip. So I don't mind throwing on some straps here and there. Uh, so I'm, I'm gonna go with, a, because my stance is wider, I'm gonna go with a wider grip. You can't have your arms and your legs running into each other when you're doing a deadlift, uh, which I see often. I see sometimes people are kind of like here, and then they're, they, they go to like, like move, move forward like this, and then they're hitting right there. On a conventional deadlift, you need your knees to travel forward to the barbell a little bit. So I'm gonna get a little bit of space and you can see I'm nicked up from previous years of lifting and nicked up a little bit today. Uh, that's just kind of part of it. You're gonna get smashed up a little bit when you're doing these. So I'm gonna grab the bar here, roll these guys on like yay. Oh man, now I'm locked in. I'm gonna push the bar away because I'm using the bar as a counterbalance and I'm gonna try to squat into it. This is where I can get my air because if I try to breathe at the top and then uh, grab the bar, just a tremendous amount of time that I have to hold my breath. I don't wanna hold my breath for that long, so I get the bar here. And those of you that have lifting straps, this is actually easier to do this way out here rather than being like completely bent over straight. So I go like this, now I work on breathing. There we go. So again, I'm gonna roll the weight towards me. You don't have to do this. You don't have to lift this way. This is just something that I do that I've messed with. You may see Eddie Hall and some others do it. Some other lifters do it. So here again. When we're deadlifting, Deadlifting is a couple simple rules. We want the hips to be lower than our shoulders. We want our back to be flat. And we want to make sure our stomach is tight. And rule number four, which is the hardest one, is don't shit your pants. So rule number one is we need to figure out a way to keep our back flat. Rule number two, uh, we're gonna work on getting our hips lower than our shoulders. Because sometimes I see people trying to deadlift like this. 
like they're a bird with their head in the sand. Not a very good way to, to deadlift. You don't want to look like a fishing rod taking a big fish out of the water. You don't want to be like this, right? We want to have better leverages than that. A great way to save your back is to use your butt. As you're doing a lift, you want to clench your butt cheeks. You want to flex your butt. And that'll give you a big ace anyway. Is just uh, you know using your hips and using your butt during the lift. But the more that you use your butt, the less likely it is that you're going to round over. If you round over and finish a lift like this, it's actually really hard to squeeze your butt and to finish the lift. You'll like be like stuck. You can't activate your your butt cheeks. So show you one more time. I'll just show you a regular conventional uh, pull, and I'll just get see if I can get in a little bit better position. Hands are going to go in a little closer because my stance is now closer. There you go. Back flat. You're trying to get your shoulders high before you start and your butt as low as you can get it within reason. So here I go. Use the bar to pull yourself in place. Get a lot of air in your stomach. If you want to use a lifting belt, crank the belt down and uh, force your stomach into your belt to help protect your lower back a little bit more. So. I don't think you've ever tried these, have you? Um, no. Nope. These are brand new to me. This is like a pull-up with your hamstrings. Hamstring pull-ups. Here we go. It's like a, like a mon jacket. I would advise like not trying to curl up the way I did at first. Okay. Just move your whole body. So bring your whole body yeah. down and do like a back extension. Okay. And then pull with your legs whatever way you can. That's good. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Does it hurt or you feel okay? Oh, no, that feels good. Good, there you go. Good. I'm getting stronger working out with you, these guys. Yep. These guys are we're fucking shit up in here. There you go, you got it. This exercise will, it will pull on your hamstring pretty hard if you've never done it before. That's why I advise them to do a back extension first just to kind of like see, kind of check everything, make sure he's not gonna kill himself. Going back and forth, working some quads, working some hamstrings. Working out is actually very, Working out is very, very simple. What's the main thing I want to do today? And by work your way backwards, what I'm talking about is like, what's the top set going to look like? Okay, I want to do 405 for some reps, like I did today. That's in the deadlift. Deadlift's the main event. The main, the main sets, the main event, the main meat and potatoes, if you will, of the, of the workout is doing the three sets of five with 405. Then from there, it's like, I'm only gonna do about two or three or four other exercises. So I'll have a total of four, maybe at the max for upper body, maybe you might get into like six exercises, but you don't need any more than that. I get asked all the time about motivation, the way that you stay motivated, the way you stay fired up to do this for 30 years like I have, is that you don't derail yourself. Don't demotivate yourself. Don't do so much in one day that you can't recover from it. Workouts are only as good as their recovery. You smash yourself in one day, I guarantee you won't want to come back for a few days after that. So this exercise is called a glute ham raise. And I'm really trying to get my body to go that way a lot. Especially for me, I have most of my weight is like from here up. So the more that way I go, the more hamstring tension I can acquire. I'm trying to keep the back flat the whole time. And really curl my hamstrings. If I want to cheat, I can kind of go here. I can do this if I want to cheat more. 
because the exercise is difficult. I kind of run in here. Key with hamstring stuff though is keep the reps low, work them hard, but really be careful that you don't overtrain them because the muscles that you can um, the muscles that you can open up and stretch with can just get really really sore. And I'm not saying you don't want your hamstrings to be sore, but it's a real it's a real kick in the balls when they're really really sore. So just be careful. Like if you're doing direct hammy work, realize they're getting a ton of work from squats, they're getting a ton of work from deads. And when you do direct hamstring work, keep the sets low for a little while to get used to it. All this stuff all the time is just, um, it's always just getting accustomed to things. The body will adjust to it. Your body will get used to the movements that you're doing. But it just takes time. Concerned a lot about how much weight's on here. Just, you know, just moving it, moving it around. Find a range of motion, work the muscle. Bring the weight down a little bit. You get a little bit of range of motion in here. Probably like uh, top two or three questions I get asked. Number one's always about my cholesterol. <laughs> Of the food I eat, but anyway, like what I was gonna say is uh, more importantly, so we can talk about that. Um, we're all gonna die from something, right? So, whatever. Just kidding. I get blood work done all the time. My cholesterol always checks out to be pretty good. I've made a lot of adjustments to it, and since I've gone like lower carb, and since I've eaten more fat, and since I've eaten more cholesterol, uh, the numbers have actually improved. They've gotten better. My triglycerides are really good. A lot of my other markers for health are excellent. I can share them with you guys, but I don't know what that'll do. I don't know if that'll help because you'll still ask the same questions. But probably the number one question I get asked all the time is how have I recovered from injuries and how do I have longevity in the game? And this right here is, is a big part of it. What I'm gonna show you, it's right down here. Don't look down there. I got eyes too, up here, they're up here. But right down here, right between my legs lies the answer to how I survived this long. Now, just, uh, so this is called strength aerobics. And really, this is kind of almost like bodybuilding in a way. Just, I'm just gonna move really, really slow. I'm not gonna lock anything out and I'm not gonna pause at the bottom. So I can get full range of motion, um, not stopping at the bottom, not stopping at the top. Sets to six to 10 reps. The number one key uh, to injury once you have gotten injured is to get back to the thing that hurts the worst or get back to the thing that hurt you in the first place as quickly as possible. You had a downhill skiing accident, you need to go skiing. You have a, an accident on the bench press, in a squat, in a deadlift, you hurt yourself. From a mental standpoint, you gotta figure out a way to get back, back on it. For me, whenever I tore my pec, I was benching the next day with my hands, with the bar, with a broomstick, just moving because you need to get that block out that that's going to hurt and that's going to be anything that really bothers you. And then uh, strength aerobics is using like about 30% of your max, 30% of your max and moving really, really super duper pooper scooper slow like this. Nobody wants to do this stuff though and those that do it only do it for like a workout. You need to do it for a while. So you have a knee injury, then this could be something that you could do. You don't have a belt squat, use a leg press, like use whatever, use whatever you got. But the objective is we're never gonna go here. We're not, not gonna lock out. We're just gonna stay bent the whole time. And we go right through here. A little slower, about four or five on the way down. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I did this with the bar. I did this with a bar and, two ten, and a 10 on each side. Kept adding weight every week. <clears throat> Next thing you know, 
the bar and antennas on each side turned into a plate, which turned into 185, which turned into 225, which turned into 275, which turned into 315, which turned into 365, which then turned into 405, 455, 495, 545, and eventually the 568 that I did at the meet. So that was after tearing my pec twice, and then luckily for me, I tore it again on that same meet. <laughs> But I only tore it because I tore my tricep in training and I wasn't as strong as I needed to be. So I benched a 578 with a torque tricep. I'm dying, by the way. Dying. Completely dying. This is shattering my life right now. Rep range on that. Anywhere between like eight and about 15 reps. You're moving so slow. Sneaking a garbage set right here. Okay. Just uh, just moving around and um, I just used whatever weight was on here and used pretty much the way it was set up. And made a small adjustment to the back, but just going, that's all it is. Moving around, it's kind of a waste of time because there's not really an amount of weight on here that's really worth my working set, but it's an extra set, get me used to the new movement that I switched to. I'm changing the, uh, I'm changing where this resistance hits. So, there we go. The garbage set, get a little blood, get used to the movement, see how the machine feels. And then uh, we're just going to do one hard set, so that's kind of the reason for the garbage set is just a setup set, basically setting things up for the next uh, the next shot that we take. Good. Now we're going all in right here. So we're going to up this weight a little bit. Let's see how about yay. So what we're going to do right here is just try to like go for some annihilation. So uh, on this one, it's just going to be one big set. We're switching out the uh, gears here on this piece of equipment it uh, the cam kind of hits you at different points and um, the way I like to do sets like this and the way I like to do drop sets and stuff is with sets of like four to six so that way we're not doing nine million reps but maybe for the last set that I do maybe I'll do a little bit more reps but we'll see we're trying not to really adjust the weight we're trying to keep the weight the same the whole time but we'll see what we can do here main thing is just to like to torture yourself that's what we're trying to do Whoa. I locked it in back a little bit more so it stretches the quads a little bit more. And move that seat back a little bit. The seat's in a good spot. Now I can kind of flex my hip a little bit better. myself there for a second. That looks pretty easy. I give that a try and he's done. So that's it for today. That's all that's all we're doing. We did um I I actually got in a 10 minute walk before the 10 minute walk so I did two 10 minute walks. Uh, 405 for three sets of five. Gave you guys some instruction on the deadlift right there. Uh, moved into some uh, belt squats with a glute ham raise. Basically worked quads and hamstrings back and forth. So if you don't have these pieces of equipment at your gym and you wanna follow along and you wanna do these things, all you need to know is superset some sort of quad movement, a leg press or a lunge with a hamstring movement. 
um, any hamstring movement you want, a glute, a, uh, a uh, glute bridge would be a good example. Any form of leg curl would be a good example, but we went back and forth between the belt squat and the glute ham raise. Once we were done with that, we just moved on over here into doing some of the uh, leg extension, killed ourselves with one set. It's uh, 6.30 in the morning, our day is done. I gotta bring my son to school by 7.30 and then that's then my day starts. Get to kick everything off from there. Um, I'll probably hit the treadmill for a little bit, although running might be uh, pretty hard because my legs are heavy. But I do have about 20 minutes, so I should just go and get it done. Thank you guys for following along. Appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for checking out all the other videos. I'm giving a lot of advice on keto, giving a lot of advice on fasting. Always, as always, kicking you guys with some uh, motivation. Really appreciate all the great feedback on the video about my bro. Uh, hopefully that, hopefully you guys found that to be helpful and uh, a lot of great responses from it. And a lot of people opened up, you know, in a really big way to me just through the comments, which is pretty crazy because everyone's aware that everyone can read that. And I just thought that, that was really cool. People talking about stuff they normally don't want to talk about. But yeah, that's uh, that's it for today. Felt great. Got in all the work that we needed. Strength is never weak. This weakness is never strength. Catch you all later. Awesome.